Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. me hearties and welcome once again to full stream ahead Arg, i be your captain charlie the professor esser and with me as always is miss skinny rich friend it's mars oh, in a world of sand which gets everywhere a man stands to face the gathering storm this is the book of boba fett chapter four boba partners with Fennec Shand. Um, our director this week is Kevin Tancherian, T- Tancharian. Um, writers this week, we have John Favreau, George Lucas, and Noah Clore as our staff writer, hardest working man in show business, as always. Um, and yeah, this was Gets the Written by and Created by for John Favreau. And that is our team. Oh, my goodness. Um, Tancherian, that name sounds familiar. Like there was yeah. a Netflix show that that person was involved in. That name sounds very familiar. No, 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 no. So what it is, Jed Whedon now goes by dead Jed Tancherian because his wife is Tancherian. How And they produced Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., for Joss Whedon. Ah. Interesting. As you may have heard, Joss Whedon is a bit of a, a persona non grata. Um, not going to put cheese on his potatoes anymore. And um, so as a result, at some point, Jed, I think, sort of using his wife's last name. But yes, but the uh, his wife, uh, who also shares the same last name as this gentleman, Though I don't know if they're related or not, mm. you know. Oh, that's as we, yeah, but yeah, because I, I got confused there too. Because at first I thought it was the guy from Agents of Shield who had utilized, who was utilizing the name. So it was not; it was different. So, wow. uh, but yes, but the name is very familiar because you know the Tenchirions, and like I said. This guy may be related to Jed's wife, which would make perfect sense because it's Hollywood. Everybody knows each other. Mm. You know, everybody works in the same biz. And, you know, regardless, it's very fascinating and very enjoyable. Um, but in this episode, uh, let me think here. Do we open up? Yeah, we open up in back, back in, in the back to tank. We're back in but the this back time. To tank. There's an interesting conversation. They're like, hey, you're fully healed, meaning that that's not just like a nightly ritual that he partakes in all the time. It's just something happened to him recently that he's trying to recover from. And it's been taken yeah. in months and months and months. Yeah, right? well, he's had, yeah, he's had a rough go. And I, I get the feeling he has not had access to a back to tank until just recently. Ah, but ah. I get the feeling there was not a back to tank in Slave 1. Fair enough. That that he has been just sort of having to heal the old fashioned way um, up until now, because there's even a line in this where you know uh, Fennec says to him, "You need to get yourself to a back to tank." Mm. Um, 
I guess in the Mandalorian, he's already healed because you don't see that many scars on him when he's in the Mandalorian, right? No, you don't. But by the time he's, well, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's it's debatable. Um, Because that's one of the big things about the flashbacks in this is how essentially there is an arc that we kind of get to the end to at this one, at the end of this one. That's the, I think that's our last flashback because I feel like that is the last, uh, that is the last moment of the, um, of the, uh, of the flashbacks that bring us up to date because after this is when they go and partner with, uh, 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 the Mandalorian. Oh. And then, they come back at the end to take out Bib Fortuna. So, um, huh. within this structure, and that's sort of the question, is would this show had been better if you had opened... So, and I think people will point out that this opens up... Well, no, because it opens up at Jabba's Barge, doesn't it? Or does it open up... Um, no, After, it, it opens up in the back to tank, and and I think you mean no, 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 the, the very first episode, the very oh. first episode of this. I'm trying to remember because the idea is is that you could have set this immediately after it, it, that rather than have this be all flashbacks, you could have established this original arc, um, and then you have the separation episode we, we, that basically gets to this episode with Phoenix Shand. And then they join up with uh, the Mandalorian. And then they come to the comeback. But, you know, I can see how that's problematic, too, because then you don't get the gangster story that we want to tell. So trying to figure out how do we tell this gangster story? Because we have this entire Wikipedia entry for what happened when he gets out of the Sarlacc pit. And one wants to know that. But they also are going to want to see what we're going to do with the gangsters. But we are going to have this big jump in the middle here where the entire Mandalorian season fits. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that is the, that is the complexity of it, obviously. Um, uh, anyway. I think we start here in his memories uh, in the desert when he finds Finnick. Yes, yes, yes. And um And so right away they're taking us back to the Mandalorian. Right. So it comes um, with and Fennec showing and I, us what happened in that moment. And he takes her to a mod parlor, as he says, which is basically where you get where you intentionally get not just having your hand cut off or getting cut in half by a Jedi, but because you actually want to have these enhancements put on your body. You want to be a cyborg. And, um, and honestly, it's weird to me because it really looks like she's already dead. You know, in fact, there were times when she was on the operating table and, uh, they made her look really waxy. Like, this is just a corpse, but no, no, no they can fix it, you know, because that's where technology is in this yeah. galaxy far, far away, you know. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, they're, they're, they're mostly dead. Right, maybe you know? in, in, in this sort of um, society, they've figured out somehow how to keep the force connected to a body long after all <laughs> conventional vital signs have faded. Uh, and with yeah. that connection, they can spark some sort of uh, rebirth. And I do think that is exactly what it is. And when you see Fennec, um, and it's a, it's a fun scene. Um, I get the feeling there was, you know, it's, it, was, this, it was it was pretty tongue in cheek, wasn't it? I mean, like their mod seemed unnecessary. Like yeah. it's a tiny laser, but you need like a giant contraption to control like this tiny little pin. You know, <laughs> it's like well, it was just over know. the top. I thought it was. It was. It, I thought. I mean, like I hope it was intentionally yeah. funny because it was funny. Yeah, I mean, I. I I, I can't speak to that as far as any kind of alien tech goes. I find most alien tech to be a little odd in general. You know, as has been pointed out, you know, that people are still using 
walkers when wheels were invented, like, you know, a billion years ago. So it's, it, it's the, it's just the, um, you know, and to be fair, the mods clearly are about aesthetics. So it's not just about modifying part of your body. Right. It's about having it look cool when you do it. It's like steampunk. Right. It's exactly. Not enough, it's not enough that we get this cool laser beam. No, no, I want I want it to be polished and I want I want it to flip out. <laughs> and, I, and, and I want it to be purposefully inconvenient. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Because that's how cool it is, right? <laughs> right. Um, it's 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 interesting though, because of course she wakes up and then she goes, "I guess I'm worth more alive than dead," and he says to me, at, at least, and it gets into this interesting thing about you know, are they going to, um, you know, what is what is their what is their goal, and you know. Boba's like, you know, I saved your life, you owe me, but I'm not going to sell you. I'm not going to exploit you in this way, but I, I do need help getting my ship back. And uh, I love when they go back to Jabba's palace and they release the little uh, floaty, which reminded me of the floaters they had in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., hmm. you know, where they sit in the little, you know, the little dwarf to go and uh, record everything. Um, which I thought was neat, and that's how they make their plan. They siege the palace, of course, and uh, defeat the monstrous kitchen uh, droids. My favorite thing is, though, that like he, he knows, he goes, uh, I don't know what he's expecting, but he's expecting like maybe under 20, like around 15. My guess is that's what he was expecting, the amount of security presence there. This thing sees like, you know, five times that many uh, security guards, and her response is, ah, we're going quiet. Yeah. You know, like to her, it was just routine. It was just like, okay, yeah, I, we're just going quiet. You know, it's like, I do this yeah, all well, the time. Trust me, I got this. That's great. And, I thought and that was cool. To be fair, it works, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, she you knew know? what she was doing. She does. She, yeah. Really, she is very much the the power behind the man. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I like the fact that they have, they clearly have a relationship building in this. Because it is literally, Boba is like, you know, I just want my ship back. You're free to go. And then it's like, the, even when they have the discussion at the end, it is that idea, well, the end of that part portion. You know, even in that aspect, it is this idea that, um, you know, you can, you can uh, stick with me. You know, she's like, well, you know, look, I'll still work for you. That's fine. I'm happy to work for the money, but I have to be my own person. And he's like, no, look, I'm going to offer you something no other employer ever did, and that's loyalty, which... Sounds like we treat all of our employees like a family here. But, you know, you want to hope for more than that from good old Boba Fett. But, uh, no, but he clearly says to her, I pledge to use my life to save yours. Yeah. And, you, you know, you know and, and, and that's a, a rare commodity in, in a far flung world where ties yeah. are hard to manage. And that is the question. It's like, is that. Is Boba a guy you can trust on this? And I think that at this point, Fennec believes he is. Yeah. And I think most people would, because that, that's the thing about Boba. Boba is interesting. Although it's, it also is interesting in this, in that Fennec also doesn't believe that the speeder bikers killed the sand people. So that's definitely going to come back again. I hope so. That, that you know, I would love to know that the Tuscans put up more of a fight, mm -hmm. that a bunch of ragtag group of like, you know, pillagers weren't able to overtake the mighty warriors of the Tuscan kingdom. And, you know, to be fair, it's sort of a play on what happened with Luke's family when they, when, ooh, in a nice parallel, Vader intentionally made it look like the Tuscans killed. Uncle Owen and Aunt Baru, in the same way that Anakin's mother was killed by the Tuscans. Again, trying to feed that hate 
into um, Luke at that first mm-hmm. episode. And then, but of course, it takes Obi-Wan to say, no, look, this was not the Tuxen, Tuscans. The tracks are not right, and uh, the hits are much too precise. Which, again, we also maybe learn was maybe all BS from Obi-Wan, but still was true, you know. And in this case, it is this idea that the Pikes most likely are using the Spiker Gang as their front, as this group that they're paying for muscle, but really they're just there. So that that's anytime, probably how the Pikes collect protection money from all the other businesses under the guise yeah. of, oh, we're paying it too. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and the idea would be that they can equip these speeder bikers with heavy armor as needed and perhaps even heavy reinforcements as needed. Um, and, you know, it becomes that they just become one more pawn on, 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 the, on the board to the Pikes. Because it is clear the Pikes are the big bad of this. Right. I wish they would make them, you know, seem intimidating somehow. Because I feel like the sense you got when they came off that freight liner and they were coming to this planet, right? They, they, there was like this dramatic music playing. Uh, like they wanted you to feel like uh, in Dune when the Sardaukar dropped down, you're like, oh, my God, this is this like, you know, mighty fighting force. You didn't get any sense of that. I was like, oh, I thought there were just a bunch of politicians showing up. And then later yes. the conversation, you're like, oh, they were supposed to be like these, you know, these military uh, super fighters. But I was like, oh, okay. But every exposure we've had to them thus far on the show, they've just been kind of like, uh, you know, the politicians. They talk good and, and they understand politics. I never saw them as, as a threat of any sort unless they're hiding behind, you know, their slitted carts on a, on a fast-moving bullet train. Yeah, but you know what? They may have lots of slitted carts on fast-moving bullet trains. Because that's what makes you a great warrior. I mean, to be even Boba Fett says it in this episode, which is like, I'm much more intimidating with my armor, you know. And that's the thing is, in the Pikes, it's like, no, 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 we're we're just a simple aquatic uh, race that deals in spice. But you know what? Uh, We actually have all the weapons and all the armor, and we are a coordinated, unified team that has drilled and drilled and drilled. We're not a ragtag bunch of uh, moisture farmers here, you know. They remind me of frogs. I, I, it'd be cool if there was like one species of them that shot poison darts. That would be really cool. Well, and and again, that may be something that they don't often use, but that they can. You know, that's one of those weird things. We're like, oh no, actually, our species, yeah, we shoot poison darts. Poison, no, not poison pipe darts that make you hallucinate. <laughs> yeah, who knows, man? I mean, it would be very interesting <laughs> to see them explore something like that. Um, yeah. But, you know, and that's the thing. is like, as far as what makes pikes, uh, uh, you know, I mean, and that's sort of one of those things. It's like, you don't necessarily think of the huts per se as intimidating. I mean, yes, they're bulky. And we can imagine a hut being just a beast having a massive soak, you know, having lasers just bounce off their dense flesh, you know, as they crush you under their mighty mollusk, uh, stuff, you know, I guess, uh, gastropods that they are. And, um, but, you know, a lot of things can not necessarily look intimidating, but actually be very powerful. I mean, just in the fact that there are so many species that are so attuned to the force that they can see a Jedi mind trick coming from a mile away. Hmm. And a lot of these species don't seem particularly impressive per se, like Watu species or the, I mean, the huts are, you know, like with the huts, you think it's force of will, but with Watu, you realize, Oh no, he, that he's just, he knows what the force is and he knows you're doing a Jedi mind trick that doesn't Hmm. work on him. You know, uh, we know you. We know what Jedi do. None of us think it's all that cool. And you know what? Stop it. You want to deal? We can deal. Um, um, and and uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, but um, you know, I mean, that's the thing. So the Pikes may well be, you know, maybe just an unassuming race 
like arguably humans are. Humans are a very unassuming race. We have no super strength, no claws, but they may have all sorts of other sidelines that really up their ante, you know, yeah, both yeah. culturally, spiritually, physically, you technologically. know, technologically. Technologically, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if these are the same species that were doing the trade embargo or not. I feel like they are, but I could be wrong. Um, don't remember. That was in episode one. Hmm. Um, those are the ones that had the kind of somewhat oriental accent when they were speaking with Emperor Palpatine. Well, pre-Emperor Palpatine. But anyway, so... Oh, you meant you meant the movie episode one. I, I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah. I thought you meant episode one of the show. I was like, man, I don't remember that. I remember Palpatine being in. I was like, what was that watching? No, 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 oh, no, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> right, I'm mixing right. my movies. No, no, no. no. Yeah, I, yes. it took me a second. That's fine. But yeah, I mean, I, I find it very interesting um, who the Pikes are, what, what they're doing. And I did like, and I did like that even though there's a question about whether the speeder markers did it. They still go and just massacre the speeder markers anyway. Well, um, I think no, no. I, I think what she intimated was that it couldn't have only been the bikers. I mean, I think they had pretty solid confirmation that the bikers were there and involved. Uh, but she found it hard to believe that it could have been only the bikers. Yeah, so. I think that's a fair cop too. And and then we go to the pikes and the logical, the yeah. logical line that the pikes are the ones. The pikes have been the ones running the show. That when Jabba's empire collapsed, um, everyone sort of went their own ways. Uh, you know, there was a a a image of a uh, what do they call it? A uh, Dagon still in charge. You know, Daimyo. Daimyo, thank you. A Daimyo still in charge with Bib Fortuna. But really, Bib Fortuna was barely a Daimyo. You know, all the families sort of went and did their own thing. And while everyone is divided, that's when the Pikes moved in. And once the Pikes moved in, you know, all of these little fighting families aren't going to be able to do much. And that is where, um, Boba is going to move into his place. Um, I did like the scene with Black Chrysanthus in the casino. Um, I wish they would have, because like, I wish they would have showed him losing to those guys first. So I knew why he was getting angry. I couldn't decide if he was just like a racist Wookiee or like what. You couldn't tell what his motivations were. He was just angry at them for having a good time. I actually think it was. Yeah, I, th- I actually think it was. He was angry at them for having a good time. I think he. I think he is a racist Wookiee. I think he. he oh, because there was a line about. There was a line earlier about, you know, killing a sleeping, uh, uh, whatever that race is. I forget what they're called. <laughs> um, you know, uh, tre- Trendosian. Trendosian, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, I'm not some sleeping Trandosha. It's just like, <laughs> you know. So I get real. This guy really hates Trandoshans. So okay, fair and, enough. Because yeah, that's how he came off. I and it's just like, like you know, why would you like do that with a character you want us to like? You want him to be like have an edge, but like, I don't know. What was know. what was the point what, of that do we scene? Want to like him? Do we want to like him? Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's like uh like uh he's like Mr. T. He's like B. A. Baracus. He's like the muscle. The cool guy who can like you know bust stuff up. Uh, I just he's like he's Sarah the, Hulk. He, you know, so you want to? I don't know. Yeah, well, I kind of, I kind of see him more. Have you ever seen the Dirty Dozen? No. Okay. When the Dirty Dozen, um, what's his name? Uh, played Kojak. Um, Tully Savalas plays a real awesome BA sociopath character, and by the end of it, you're like, oh. We weren't supposed to root for Telly Savalas' character. Mm. It's, you get that Joker reveal like, no, they're just crazy. And I think with Black Chrysanthus, that is something we're supposed to get here. It's like, this is a guy who is... But then you immediately draft him to the good guy's team. So I was like, oh, it must have been. I would, he must have lost money to them. That's in my head. That's what the story I came up with. That's how it made sense to me. 
Yeah, I, to me, it was just a bunch of a, a bunch of rich. Because I mean, even when the one, uh, and this is how I knew it wasn't anything of weight. Is the one Trandoshan hits him with a bottle over the back of his head, and he just turns around, and it's like, why are you even still fighting? You know? And then you have uh, Jennifer Beals comes out in her little headdress, and, you know, Black Chrysanthus, this is above you. This is below you, what you're doing. Come on. Um, You know? It's a good speech. It's a good speech. It's a great it's a good speech, which is where you can see this is going to be another ally of Boba's. Because Boba sees the speech. Boba sees what she can do. Black right. Chrysanthus, he's, you know, I get we all love Wookiees. They live hundreds of years. You can live a hundred years and still be a dumb jerk. And I, I want to see Yeah. The you first time be. you saw him, you're like, "Oh man, that that guy's awesome." I I, I want to root for that guy. Well, you know, you're going to get to be able to root for our, our uh, rancor later because he's a real lovable rancor. He's got the he, big claws he going that way, yeah. But he he still he loves he loves his boba, and boba loves him. And that's you know, it's like that's the thing. It's like you can look like a monster. And be a soulful, deep, and complex character, just like Chewbacca. Although Chewbacca was in the pits for a while, too. And had no problem eating people. You know, that's the thing that to always remember in this universe. Sentience eating, eating sentience is just an accepted moral norm. And do like Trandoshans grow their arms back? They're lizards, right? So they must. I mean, they might. Because that's they why might. nobody seemed to care. Well, I mean, it's one of these, well, you know, here's what I'll say. Obi-Wan cut off that guy's arm and no one seemed to care either. And I get the feeling it might just be that, yeah, you know, that's, you know, just put some Bacta on that, stick it on. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll be in recovery for a month, you know. What can I tell you? <laughs> it's Yeah, you can't put Trandosians in handcuffs. <laughs> but the idea is, is that in this universe you can get limbs cut off all the time so like having, I'd like no, to think that they can grow them back the world would make more sense that nobody would care like either I would have to believe that Trandoshans are the lowest 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 rung of society like the lowest caste that nobody cares about which would complicate the world so much that I don't want to think about it so it's easier for me to think that they just grow their arm back so that's the reason everybody's so flippantly like ah all right Business as usual. Harry, hit the band. And then, you know, like. Or I I like my idea that you can just get that arm stuck back to you. I mean, he just ripped it off. It's not like he ripped it off and took it with him. He just ripped it off and he left it there. And it's like, okay. It's like, you know, it's like when you're a butcher and you cut your finger off accidentally. You have to go to the hospital and get it. No, but they're lizards, though. Lizards have that ability. So I'd like to think. Yeah, well, yeah, but. It's like Deadpool can regrow an arm, but it's always easier when he can just stick his arm back on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. It's like, it's a lot more time to grow the arm and a lot more energy and a lot more effort, maximum yeah. effort to regrow a limb. Whereas if you can just stick it back on, just stick it back on. Just put some back to on that, you'll be fine. Um, yeah. Back to Tustin. Yes. I really want to know what Bacta is because it does seem like a pretty universal heal all. Um, we have our meeting of the families of Tuscan, or not of Tuscan, of Tatooine, um, which I found was interesting. And it's also interesting just in the fact that they all decide we're not going to back you against the pikes. But yeah, we can say we'll, we'll stay neutral in it. We, we have no interest in because they, and he's right that they know that if they help the pikes, the pikes are just going to run over them and still steal everything they have anyway. But the pikes are going to take over if they have to. But if he stands up to the pikes and he can get his muscle and he can build his little army against them to resist pike interference, then it's going to look more profitable to be a little less 
it, basically when you're fighting a defensive war, it's always best to be on the side of the defense than the guys trying to invade, especially when you're a semi-aquatic species trying to invade a desert planet. Mm. Just throwing that out there, you know? Yeah. Um, but I like this episode, even though it does seem like it was two different episodes, and the two storylines don't directly connect. Right. But they build out our lore. Like I said, it's it's a very complex question of whether or not you should have done the Book of Boba Fett of everything leading up to them taking over from Bib Fortuna and then in season two with their taking over of the mob world. But I think that a lot of people really wanted to see what they were going to do with the mob world. So it's like, it's there's no way you can slice it up and give all that backstory and give all of the the intrigue that we're going to be building. So Yeah. And I I had no problem with it. I didn't mind it at all. Um, okay. I, I thought it's been paced well, and uh, the two stories have been woven together in an interesting way. Uh, each little piece of his backstory gives you some insight into what's going to be happening in this episode and why he does the things that he does. So I, I thought it's been fine. I mean, the problems I've had with the show, uh, the, the, the few minor gripes, um, were definitely in, in a different area of the production than, than their choice of uh, timeline continuities and whatnot. Uh, my, yeah. my issues have been more aesthetic in, in a few places. Overall, I've really yeah. done this. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see what you think about the next episode. Because hmm. it has a lot of interesting aesthetics in it. Um, and is definitely something of a filler episode. But um, how many how many episodes are we supposed to get? Well, I think next is so that was episode five. I next, I, I gotta assume there's got to be more than six because we've already gone through a this few. Is five, five is tonight, right? Yeah, this was five. Yeah, the one that just came today is five, and I doubt they're gonna end the whole thing tomorrow. So, or not tomorrow, but next week. Next week, yeah. So yeah, I have to assume. There's hmm. more to it. All right, um, Miles, uh, any final thoughts on tonight's episode? Uh, no, where where did this one end? This one ends just after the Oh, yeah, just of the after families. the Rancor po- uh, pokes his, his, his hands out from underneath well, yeah. and the family <laughs> know, I- like, hey, I'm down here with you because I'm choosing to. I could be sitting up there, oh, you don't think I have the power to, what, we, what are you going to do if we don't? Hey, just letting you know, hey, you don't have to go, but, you know, I'm sitting yeah. down here out of choice. I, I know, and, and, and I think on a level on that, it was just that he was letting know that he was rebuilding the power base that, that Java had. He was reestablishing the strengths that people knew Java for. Um, and, uh, and I like that he has his little baby rancor there. It was very nice. Um, sad we didn't get a little more Danny Trejo, but, you know, you can't always have Danny Trejo. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, and then they get to the they get to the end, and it is just this idea of, you know, they need muscle. And Phoenix uh, says, well, if you have money, I can get you muscle. I know where muscle can be bought. Which is, you know, again, and this is another criticism of this, is that Boba is not prepared to be a mob boss, but Fennec definitely is. Like, Fennec could be a mob boss tomorrow. She has chosen not to. Uh, Boba wants to be a mob boss. Right. But Boba doesn't... has the why for it. She doesn't have a why, really. She's searching exactly. for a why, which is what he provides is so interesting and fascinating. It's a very interesting and worthwhile why. He has a very strong why. He has that willpower to, to force things in that direction. He cares enough to do it. She's just having fun and wants to be useful and productive in some way because otherwise life is boring. Exactly. And now they're going to go find some muscle. So... Can't wait to see who all the muscle is. Um, All right, Maz, uh, if everyone likes this show and wants to talk to you directly about it, how can they find you? 
Oh, they can email me at mazmanzor at gmail.com uh, or find me on Facebook under Maz Manzor. That's M O Z M A N Z O R. And of course, uh, you can always talk to any of us here on the Capes and Lunatics Network at Capes and Lunatics at G- gmail.com. That's Capes and Lunatics. Spelled out, all one word, at gmail.com. Uh, send us all a letter or send any one of us a letter, and we'll get it and we'll read it on the air. Likewise, if you want to talk to us personally, call 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Doing so will allow you to record a message about anything uh, Book of Boba Fett related, um, the upcoming... Oh, what's that Amazon show? The Boys. Uh, the Boys related. Any of the shows we're going to cover here, uh, including She-Hulk and Moon Knight and who knows what else, uh, talk to us and we will talk back to you. Uh, call that number, 614-382-2737. And likewise, just know we here are working for you, our fans. And if you go to Linktree, that's L A N K T R dot E E slash Capes and Lunatics. Then you'll be able to see merch for us. <coughs> Sorry about that. As well as links to everything else we do, including our Patreon page, where if you become a Patreon for as little as $5 a month, you can participate in our worst superhero movie brackets of all time. Uh, you can vote, you can be a part of, part of that, and you can listen to those shows for free. And all of our movie reviews are topless, um, at least partially. Uh, meanwhile, if you'd like to write to me directly in the old fashioned email way that our mothers and fathers once did, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Sorry about my voice, folks. And of course, follow me on the Twitter. As I live tweet, now me when I don't fall asleep beforehand because I'm sick with the uh, C word at um, C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R look for the two E's in the middle for what? For quality bing oh boy I've asked me hearties (laughs) thank you for listening to another episode of full stream ahead. We've enjoyed having you here. I've enjoyed having you here. I hope you learned a little something. Tune in next week when we once again sail full stream ahead. Arrgh.